It's Master Chef. Two expert judges to test them at the highest level. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. This is one tough competition. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. It's 8 a.m. on quarter-final day, and these four heat winners have returned to fight for a coveted place in the semi-finals. Which one of these four is going to make it through to the next round? The competition gets tougher, the cooks get better, the food gets finer, the tension increases. I'm here to be able to follow my dream. Us uh, East End boys are not just about pie mash and liquor and jelly deals. I'm here to compete and, and to win. I'm here to prove what I can do, um, ultimately to win the competition. If I didn't take this chance, I don't think I'd ever have the courage to do it again. To prove they're the best, today they will have to produce an exceptional three-course meal of their own design. I love it. But before that, they must show the judges that they have food knowledge. Do you know what these are? Walnuts. Um, I'm sorry, pecan nuts. They must also prove a passion for food with a genuine commitment to changing their lives. My name's Simon and I'm a foodaholic. All of my strongest memories are to do with food. So who out of these four exceptional cooks has what it takes to stay in the race? Only one of them can win. Construction company owner Simon's ambitiously opulent two-course menu sealed his place in the quarter-finals. The sauce is immaculate. You are an amateur and you're producing food which looks like it's coming out of a professional kitchen. Yeah, that's lovely soup, please. Yeah. Simon. The man who used the most expensive ingredients known to man to compile two courses. We want to see contestants getting better with every round. Simon's really got his work cut out to better his last two dishes. Winning this would just mean absolutely, you know, absolutely everything. Academic Michelle's originality impressed in her invention test with some southern Indian beef patties. The mince is cooked really nicely, it's spiced very well, it's got lovely flavour, I think it's delicious. Thank you. She is such a good cook, she's learned, she understands why she's doing what she's doing. I think her food is very, very exciting. I want to see more of these Eastern flavourings, I want to see more of this lady's food. I want to do this. It's a dream. Lancashire-born teacher Julie's fish dish was a major hit. Meaty, meaty, strong fish, back out, slight fennel finish. Good palate, well balanced, well done. But she just made it through after an unfortunate mistake. I forgot to put the sugar in my clafouti batter. You made such a blunder yeah. by not putting sugar in a dessert. The wonderful thing about Julie is she has a repertoire, she talks about food, she loves food. As long as she can hold her nerve, she can fix those mistakes very easily. We've seen virtual great plates of food three times from that young lady. It's got to be real great food and it's got to be today. She is like a cat rapidly running out of lives. We only live once. I'm here to be able to follow my dream. Finally, it's Johnny from Northern Ireland. We saw something in Johnny right from the off, and he cooked it with salmon, asparagus, and a lovely white wine sauce. We thought, whoa, there's something about this guy. For a big man, he has finesse. He's always had good flavours, but slightly subtle. For me, he needs to be able to get those flavours to really come alive. I want to win Master Chef, ultimately for me and for my kids. I cannot wait 
to eat their food today. This is seriously exciting stuff. We are just about to get ourselves a semi-finalist. I feel tense. How do they feel? By 10 o'clock, the contestants make their way back to MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home before the final cook-off. The basis of great cookery are ingredients. This is ingredients recognition. Today I have nuts, and I don't actually think this is that difficult. I've got culinary herbs. They have been giving flavour to our food for centuries. Any cook must recognise these. Who's first? Sage, only sage has this furry, velvety feel. OK, Johnny, how are you? I'm pretty good, excited. What's this? That is sage. Sage. That's sage. Sage. Michelle has started well, but the next stage is crucial. Can she now convince the judges that she's ready for a future in food? At this point, I definitely think I have what it takes to go all the way in MasterChef. I so desperately hope that I get the chance to live my dream. I come from a culture that values food over everything else. And this has offered me a really instinctive understanding of food. It's my life. I want to be known as a great chef. And MasterChef will give me this chance to turn these young, idealistic almost dreams into a reality. What I'm asking you today is give me a chance to prove that I can be a MasterChef. The pecan nut, people may mistake that today for the walnut. Do you know what these are? Walnuts. Um, I'm sorry, pecan nuts. Pecan nuts. Pecans. They are walnuts, by the look of them. I got to stick with walnuts. Johnny's ingredient recognition isn't going to plan. Can he persuade John and Greg he's deserving of a place in the semi finals? I'm going to be speaking straight from the heart. And if it's not what they want to hear, I can't do anything about that. This is me, this is what I want to do. And I'm not going to change it for someone. This competition, I feel, is a, a stepping stone for me to go on and keep doing it. Not for the next X amount of days or weeks or months, but for five years, 10 years, 20 years, however long it takes. It's not just about cooking, it's about drive, it's about commitment, it's about focus, it's about consistency, it's about making sure that your first customer gets the exact same meal as customer number 44. And that's why I want to win MasterChef more than at this moment in my life, anything else. The macadamia nuts, native of Great Australia. Good dessert. Do you know what these are? Macadams. No. They are macadamia nuts. What chestnuts? Julie's food knowledge has let her down. Now she has to convince the judges she's committed to food. Communication's my job, and even though John and Greg are scary, a class full of 15-year-olds is scarier. I'm a Lancashire lass. I'm fiercely proud of where I come from. And what I want to do is take the things from my county, from my childhood, from my culture, put my own interpretation on it. For me, MasterChef is special. If you put me through, I'll live up to what you want me to do. Thank you. Thai basil looks like ordinary basil. If they pick it up and smell it, they'll see it's not like normal basil at all. What's that? I'm not too sure on that one, but there is a, an aniseed flavour to that one. Pur purple stocked basil. Uh. Amaranth. I think that's a Thai basil. Simon's the only contestant to correctly identify all the ingredients. Can he also prove himself in the passion test? I'm not even thinking about not getting through to be able to cook for these guys. Wouldn't want to cry on national TV, but I'd come pretty close. 
Well, my name's Simon and I'm a foodaholic. I'm not in denial. I just love everything about food with a, just a huge love and a big burning desire inside my stomach. Um, and I just want to prove to you guys that, um, that us East End boys are more than just pie mashing jelly deals, that we can actually throw a good plate of food together. And um, I've got a really wicked three course meal and I just hope you guys get the chance to taste it. Okay. Simon, thank you very much. Thank you. That's all right, that's all right. Well, I, too much I am stumped. I am really stumped. It's just that they all said what I wanted to hear. I couldn't find a weak one there. I love what Johnny is saying, that the 44th dish should be just as good as the first dish. That's realism, and what he's saying is right. Johnny is thinking about why food is important, not just why food's important to him. And that, for me, has firmed his place. I think Johnny had the best chat. OK, so we both agree Johnny's in? Yeah. OK. Uh, Simon, the ingredients test has basically stamped it for Simon, hasn't it? It felt like you could give him another 100 ingredients and he would be absolutely fine. The guy cooks all the time and he has cooked beautifully so far. I reckon Simon's in. That means the two boys are in. That leaves the two girls. Oh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. You like Michelle. I think Michelle's great. I think she's great for the simple reason that in the invention test, I still think that sticks out as one of the best of many, many master chefs. It's also that cultural heritage, which I suppose for me interests me, that if you grow up with that thought process and the comment about how important as a culture food really is. But then Julie also said the same about culture. She just said, she said exactly the same thing, but this time it was Lancashire culture. Michelle, in her rounds, made very few mistakes. Yeah, but is that fair? Julie sat there and you could actually, like, see the tears in her eyes. Um, Julie's very, very emotional. I totally agree, but we are at, we are yeah. at a stage where we've got to lose one person. This is tough. Really tough. One of you has to leave us now. We've made our decision. The person leaving us Julie, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I generally just feel that I've let myself down and I, I could have done a lot better, but it's just the way things are. I'm certainly not going to give up the dream. I'm certainly not going to give up cooking and trying to develop my own ideas. Master Chef experience has been a really good one. It's been a, an adrenaline rush. I'm sorry to be going home. What hand you chop with? And my left arm. <laughs> right now, you have the chance to become a semi-finalist. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The three remaining contestants now face their most advanced cooking challenge yet. They have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. Single Dad Johnny's biggest challenge is going to be getting more flavours into his food. Can he now focus and this time pull it off? We look quite frantic, but in control, is that right? I feel frantic and I feel in sort of control. Your three courses? I'm doing a start off as a puree of English pea soup with white truffle oil and parmesan crisps. For my main, I'm doing sauteed cod on cod cakes. Sauteed cod on cod cakes? Yeah, and a clam chowder. For my dessert, a lemon sabillon. Is a bowl of soup enough to make somebody a semi-finalist? Bowl of soup, fish and potatoes and a lemon mousse. Put like that, probably not, but it's in the flavour. I've listened to you, I've taken what you're saying, and I'm going to show you that I can deliver on that. You're quite an emotional guy, Johnny. This must mean more to you than just proving a point to us. You know what? I'm not an emotional guy um, until I became on MasterChef, <laughs> and it's just changed everything emotionally. So it has. 
I think Johnny has talked himself up too much here because he's been going on so much about how much flavour is now important. It's all about flavour. I'm cooking all of these because I want to deliver the flavour. <laughs> Mate, you better. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself look pretty silly. Academic Michelle sticking to her southern Indian roots and hopes she's got what it takes to become a semi-finalist. Are you good enough, Michelle? I am just going to cook the food that I absolutely love and enjoy eating, and I'm just going to hope that it is going to be really good enough. Can you tell us what you're going to cook for us? I'm going a bit safe with the starters. I'm making a curry butternut squash soup. For my main course, sweet pilaf rice with a very spicy chicken rib a spice that is unique to where I come from, and a chocolate mousse for dessert. You know, a lot of people use different flavorings, and that is my secret weapon. <laughs> if she was going to be cooking food that comes from her, her roots, then she has to be able to present it in a way which is worthy of MasterChef. Is she going to be able to do that with a bowl of soup and a chicken curry and a bowl of mousse? Now, they better taste great. Guys, you've only got 20 minutes left. Construction company owner Simon Style is one of opulence. Will his ambitious menus be his downfall? You are going at such a ferocious pace. Yeah, I've got so many processes going in at the upfront. So 20 minutes mayhem, a um, little bit of a cooling off period in the middle, and then mayhem again at the end. What's your menu? What's your three courses? My starter is Asian crab patties with uh, baked banana porridge. My main course is going to be old spot pig stuffed with sweet red peppers wrapped in banana leaf. And my dessert is a cherry and passion fruit ripple. It's a daring thing to do, isn't it? Crab, banana, pork, pepper, yep. banana leaf. It's, it's, it's daring. Yep. He who dares. This has always been my motto. Simon right now has got a lot of component parts to make up his three courses, and that is frightening me. As far as I can see right now, there's one or two flavours too far on both those dishes. Five minutes! <laughs> 30 seconds left. Gentlemen, down your tools, please. Academic Michelle's hoping the judges will be bowled over by her starter of curried butternut squash soup. It is slightly lacking on body. The sweetness of the coconut milk is there. Underlying flavour of that curry base, it's good. It doesn't light bonfires. It's sweet of butternut squash. It has an undercurrent of spice that isn't too heavy. It allows the butternut to still come through. Very nice. It needs to be thicker. For her main, Michelle's opted to stick to her roots with a chicken suka and sweet rice. Spicy hot as it should be, with this amazing collision of caramel sweetness. This, somehow or another, is alive in your mouth with this amazing hotness from the spice. And this sweetness that is, at all the time, is flowing all the way through. I love it. Mm, that's great. That's great. Uh, chicken is beautifully moist. The flavour of the chicken is coming through, the sweetness of that chutney, it all goes. The sweetness goes, the chilli remains, and the coconut comes in. Yes, I think it's great. I really think it's great. Can Michelle continue the success of her main with a final course of chocolate mousse with amaretti biscuits and cream? Non-whipped cream on top. You ran out of time. Well... Should you go any further, you've got to get that timing right. Yes, I do. OK. Oh my goodness, that is one serious piece of chocolate mousse and biscuit, isn't it? 
It is very dense, Michelle. It's very, very rich. It's very, very thick. Two mouthfuls, I think I have enough. Too sticky, too sweet, needs lots more cream. Has single dad Johnny managed to inject some much needed flavor into his food with a starter of pea soup with white truffle oil? Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. Sweet pea, truffle, works very well together. You wanted velvety, you wanted packed full of flavor, this you have. On the nose, truffle. Therefore, it's heady and slightly sexy. Okay. The pea is sweet, the parmesan is soft and salty. It's great. It is a great, great pea soup. <laughs> Very clever. OK. Can Johnny equal the success of his soup with sautéed cod with cod cakes and a clam chowder? Oh. You've done it again, big bloke. You have done it again. It is soft, it is rich, it is deep. Fish flavour keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. All soft, all lovely. Cod I get. Salty clam I get. The texture of the potato cake I get with a little bit of crispness on the outside. That sweet sauce has become too sweet and thick for me. And it's almost like condensed milk. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry. Can Johnny win over both judges with his lemon sabayon with honeyed mascarpone cream? <laughs> mm. Sweet and citrus. Beautifully balanced. Beautifully balanced. I... Uh, your food is taking on a tone that I really like of understatement, working very, very hard to smash as much flavour as it can. The biscuit, buttery biscuits, really tasty. The mousse itself on top, that Zebion, is slightly textured because of the gelatine. But I'm going to say as an Australian, it's a bloody good dessert, mate. To start, Simon's made ambitious Thai crab patties with baked banana porridge. That's quite brown. What else is in there? I've added a little dash of dark shiitake extract. So, mushroom extract. Mm -hmm. OK. It is slightly salty from that shiitake extract. At the same time, you still get the sweetness of crab. It's very clever. It needs to be toned down on your seasoning just a touch, but it is fairly impressive for the fact that's come out of your head. 100%. It's nice, your banana porridge, the sweetness with the crab works perfectly. It's sweet, bursting with crab flavour, hint of chilli, there's far too much salt. Mm -hmm. Can he improve on his starter with loin of pork stuffed with sweet peppers, a roasted aubergine puree and a star anise and ginger sauce? The pork is cooked beautifully. And the first texture is the pork and the aubergine. You're still getting the taste of the aubergine. I, I can see why you would do the banana and the crab. I don't know why you want to put all these flavours together. Mm. I feel as though the meat is not strong enough to cope with the rest of the flavours. Mm. Because the flavours are so extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You are thinking in such an extraordinary way that this is why I find you so very fascinating. You obviously have a natural instinct. That's impressive. For his last course, Simon's made a cherry and passion fruit ripple with raspberry sauce and sugared rose petals. As soon as that comes up to your mouth, before it goes into your mouth, you get the smell of that rose. It is seriously delicious. Seriously, seriously delicious. Excellent. Look, the sun's even shone on it, Simon. <laughs> it's like, hallelujah! Now, there are three and four flavours that shake hands and give each other a nice big warm kiss. It's like honey sweet in there, it's sharp, it's creamy, it's refreshing. That is well thought out, that is beautiful. It is lovely. Lovely. Greg and I have to make a decision. 
that is going to be very, very tough indeed. Well done, thanks for your efforts, off you go. MasterChef, semi-final place. Really important. All three of them are exceptional cooks. Oh, yeah. They are exceptional cooks. There are, luckily, three very different styles. Should we talk about Michelle? Her main. Wow. That was a great dish. Soft chicken, spiced heat. I loved that. I loved it. The idea of the butternut squash soup, great idea. It delivered on flavour, but it just wasn't velvety. And that's what it needed to be, velvety rather than being watery. And it well, was watery. It, it got washed away. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't think Michelle is of the level of the two lads. We have to knock her out. She goes first, and we have to talk about the difference between Simon and Johnny. Simon worked by far the hardest, the fastest. He is whisking two bowls at once at one time. John, I don't think there's any technique that he can't handle right now. That pudding, it's extraordinary food. We've got a passion fruit semifredo in there. We've got cherries at the bottom with cherry liqueur. I mean, that was just heaven. The guy is thinking, tasting, working and understanding great, great food. His crab cakes slightly oversalted from that mushroom soy, but the fact that he used an extract of shiitake mushroom, where the guy is finding ingredients like that to use in everyday cooking, I don't know. The dessert, ah, oh, fantastic, fantastic. There is no reason why this guy can't just shoot to stardom just with a little bit of touch. Let's move on. Johnny serves us a small bowl of green liquid. Oh, <laughs> that green liquid is magical. There it goes. It's truffle before it hits your nose. Then it's beautiful sweet pea. That's seriously good food. The vivid colour and the sweetness of the peas and that earthy, earthy truffle. And then salt and sharp parmesan. I thought it was just stunning. Absolutely stunning. The cod dish with that sauce. Now, I've got a sweet too. I didn't mind that. You didn't like it as much as me. I thought that was dreamy. I thought it was absolutely delicious. Let's just talk about Johnny's attitude rather than his food, because I think this is as important. In the last round, we told him he had to work on flavour. What does he do? Goes away <laughs> and grafts and grafts and packed as much flavour into his food as he possibly could. He talks sense, he talks honestly, he picks up on everything we say and he's going to work on it. We have two great cooks. One cook who is brilliant, understands flavour, who is growing so fast because of our advice and his real want to cook and become a professional. We have one guy who is inventive, intelligent, thought-provoking and producing brilliant food. Who's it going to be? This is hard. We have made a decision. We have one semi-final place. Our semi-finalist... ..is Johnny. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. This is a I'm absolutely, you know, chuffed to, chuffed to bits with what I've done, what I've achieved to get this, you know, to get this far. It's a shame to be going home. Um, fair play to Johnny Boy. I wish him all the best, mate. Oh, that was a tough one. At the end of the day, I challenged myself. I got some great comments. I have no regrets whatsoever. And I do believe the best man won. Congratulations. That's a nice champagne I've ever had. <laughs> I feel on top of the whole world, on top of everything. Knowing I've got through to the semi-finals, 
I am at this minute just ecstatic. I have got to up my my game another another ten thousand percent. I can't feel anything at the minute but pure joy and excitement. I'm I'm this close to winning Master Chef now. Johnny will return for the semi-finals, but next time we're back with six new contestants all battling it out for the title of Master Chef. <laughs>